So we're going to first start by looking at the square root. So basically think what squared will give us 49? Our answer is 7. On this next one, we have negative square root of 25. So negative square root of 25 is 5. So we get negative 5. On this one, it's the same thing as the square root of 81 over square root of 64. Square root of 81 is 9. Square root of 64 is 8. This last one, what squared will give us a negative 9? Well, nothing times itself will give us a negative number because a negative times a negative would give us a positive 9. And a positive times a positive would give us a 9. So this one is not real. And it's all because of that negative. So now when we have the square root of a squared, we'll think about what squared will give us a squared. Well, it's just a. But it's got to be the absolute value. Because when we take the square root, we talk about the principal square root which will always be a positive number. So we need the absolute value of the variable. This next one, the square root of 25b squared, well, the square root of 25 is 5. But then with the square root of b squared is the absolute value of b. With these next two, same thing. The squared and the square roots you can think of as canceling each other out. So the square root of this quantity squared is just the quantity. But it's got to be in the square roots, because remember, it's the positive of this. And this last one, square root of 16 is 4. And then what squared gives us a to the fourth? Well, that would be a squared. One thing to note, it doesn't need the parentheses, or sorry, absolute value. And that's because a squared is always positive. And that's because any time you square a number, the result will be positive. Now with these, notice that little 3. That just means cube root. So what is the cubed root of 8? Or what cubed will give us 8? Well, 2 when we cube it gives us 8. Over here, this is the same thing as the cubed root of 1 over the cubed root of 27. So what, when we cube it, gives us 1? Well, that's 1. And what, when we cube it, gives us 27? Well, that's 3. Same thing here. What cubed will give us 125? Well, that's 5. What cubed will give us a cubed? That's just a. Notice we don't need the absolute values anymore because this time the sign actually matters. So if we have, for example, negative 2 cubed, that's negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, which is negative 8. But if we have 2 cubed, we'll have 2 times 2 times 2, which is a positive 8. So now, if it's a negative when it's getting cubed, we end up with a negative, so the negatives aren't going to disappear by multiplying out. Now this last one, what cubed gives us negative 8? Well, negative 2 when we cube it will give us 8, and that comes back to here. So same idea here, except now we're doing the fourth root. We'll think about what to the fourth power is 1. Well, that's just 1. And this is saying what to the fourth power equals 81. Well, that'll be 3. Now in this one, notice this is the same thing as 10 to the fifth times a to the fifth times a to the fifth times a to the fifth. And so, oops,
And so 10 to the 5th, the 5th root, remember those are like canceling their inverse operations. And then we have the 5th root of a to the 5th would just be a. 5th root of a to the 5th is a. Same thing. So left with a cubed. Some helpful rules to think about. If you're taking the sum root of a number to that same power, and that power and root are odd, then it's just they're going to cancel each other out. They're inverse operations. You're just left with a. However, if we have the same thing and it's even, remember we have to use the absolute values. So two things that we've talked about. This first one, if we've got some root of a product, you can take the roots individually and multiply those roots. So the same thing on the second one, if you have a fraction with a root, that's the same as the numerator with that root and the denominator with that root. So for example, if we have the square root of 4a squared, well, the square root of 4 is 2, square root of a squared is the absolute value of a. On the second one, it would be the square root of 4 over the square root of a squared, so 2 over the absolute value of a. Now, we sometimes will have roots that don't come out nice and even. There is no number, a nice integer that when we square out, we'll get 20. So what we can do is use a factor tree to break this down. So what this means is that the square root of 20 is the same thing as 2 squared times 5, because we have this 2, this 2, and the 5. Well, the square root of 2 squared is 2, and then we can just leave the square root of 5. Same idea with this one. We can break this into 9 times 8. So we can change this to the square root, and since it's square root, we want to keep things in squared. So we have 2 squared times 2 times 3 squared because we have two twos, one by himself, and then two threes. Well, the square root of two squared is two. The square root of three squared is three. And then this square root is just square root of two. So I have six root two. Now notice we want cubed roots. So that means we need when things are cubed. So 24 can be 6 and 4. Notice this time I'm writing it in terms of cubes because we have a cubed root. So the cubed root of 2 cubed is 2, and then we're still left with the cubed root of 3. We can break it out, so we have square root of 11 over square root of 36a squared. Square root of 11 doesn't simplify nice, so we can leave it. But the square root of 36 is 6, square root of a squared is the absolute value of a. This one, same idea, we can do the cubed root of 8a squared over the cubed root of 125y cubed. Notice this time, the cubed root of 8, we do know that. That is 2. However, we only have a squared, and so we leave that as the cubed root of a squared. Over, the cubed root of 125 is 5. Cubed root of y cubed is y. Now on this one, the 98 we can break this down into 2 times 49, and 49 is 7 times 7. And then notice this b is b squared times b, so we can rewrite this as 2 times 7 squared times b squared times b. Well, the 7 and the b both have squares, 
and then we are left with a 2b in our roots. On this next one, 54 can be 2 times 27. So we can rewrite this as in the cubed roots, we want cubes. And now this y to the fifth, we can write that as y cubed times y squared. And so we've got a cubed here and a cubed here. And we're left with a 2y squared still in our root. On this last one, we're back to squares. And there's two ways we can handle this. The first way we can get our factor trees. And notice 50 is 5 times 10, which is 5 and 2. So we could write this as the square root of 5 squared times 2 times a times b squared all over the square root of 2a, which would give us 5 times the absolute value of b times the square root of 2a over the square root of 2a. These will cancel and we're left with 5b, sorry, 5 times the absolute value of b. Or, we could have changed it back to one big square root. The 50 divided by 2 is 25. And these a's will cancel, and we're left with 25b squared. Well, the square root of 25 is 5. The square root of b squared is the absolute value of b. Notice they're the same thing, so it doesn't matter which way.